Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what number time this is in order to say sixth time is the charm. Seventh time. George Ella and I have been trying to do this for a while today. And we actually had a previous conversation on FaceTime that was wonderful and I will treasure. Um, and I did not record audio. So only George Ella and I will treasure it. And <laughs> she has been generous enough to spend more time with me and record on Zoom. And I tested it with my husband right before this. So <laughs> this, this should work. Um, anyway, welcome again. Thank you again. Um, Here again. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it again, that I really am so grateful for this poem that you created. It has brought a lot of joy and community into my life during a time that was very challenging, COVID and all the things that are going on in the world. And um, it's just, it, it's it's been wonderful. Speaking with people I know well, people I don't know at all, people I know on social media. And I truly feel like I meet them and get to know them through this construct, through this poem. It's very powerful. It amazes me. You never know when, you know, you write something that's going to going to have a life beyond you, and uh, I could have quit in 1993 if <laughs> I wanted to. But um, well, but how yeah. could you imagine such a thing? You couldn't. You couldn't. And the thing is, I don't think I said this before, but um, my poem jumped off from someone else's poem, and her poem started with something she heard somebody say. So somebody really said, "I am from." You know, so it came right out of uh, right out of Joe Carson's neighborhood. Somebody said this. She heard it. Her poem is about not being from a place. This woman was not born there, but she feels like she belongs. But her accent is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and it has some I am from lines in it. I'm from uh, people who don't have roots like trees. You know, and I thought, well, I do have roots like trees, so I want to speak from that place. And I love all the variations because people ask me, oh, is it okay if I break the rules? Like, absolutely break the rules. This is only a starting point if you want it to be. Yeah. Um, no, you don't, you shouldn't feel constrained. Yeah. I was doing a workshop with uh, teens in an alternate school, alternative school, and uh, the student said, it was a high school, and she said, it's none of your business where I'm from. And I said, good, right about that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he yeah. did. And it was furious. It was really great. And it worked, you know, because she heard the power of her voice. That was all, you know, that was all I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes I feel like when people come with that energy, you know, they're waiting for you to say, well, you got to do it my way. And when they hear, please go ahead, write that thing you want to write. Yeah. It's unexpected. It's very empowering. Yeah. You're, you're welcome, whatever you bring. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, I, I said earlier that I'm going to say it again, because it's true. Um, you know, people say, don't meet your heroes. And I have definitely had those experiences where I have met people who I admired their work uh, or admired what I believe they stood for. And then I meet them and they're not what I might've imagined or hoped they would be. And you have been such a generous, and this was before we were recording. <laughs> so I double mean it now. Um, you were, you've just been generous and, and lovely and if I had imagined how our interactions would go, I would imagine this. So it, it is such a treat to meet someone who to me is, I mean, you're really an icon with this poem and all it's done in the world. And you're just, like you said earlier, you're like, you know, you're just regular Georgella. Like you're also a person and I love that. And it's very, it's special. And I'm, and I'm grateful. Well, I'm grateful to be here and uh, I'm grateful for what you're doing because I think it's, I think it's wonderful. I, I uh, you know, they're quick, they're quick, but you get such a depth from each of the writers and the, from the conversation. So 
more power to you. They're so fun to talk about. It's, I, I say this to people like I, you know, I'll do small talk. Obviously it's required in the society we live in, but I'm always interested to hear more about what people really sit with, what they live with. And this gives an opportunity to have those conversations because the container is there. They're coming to read this poem to me. They're coming to share their story. So I'm not crying. No, you know, I'm just talking about what they're, I'm picking up what they're putting down. You come in at such a level that that conversation is possible. And then sometimes, well, in in my poem too, there's a line uh, that has a, a story embedded in it you know, and there could be more conversation and more writing from there. Because um, my line about the, the eye my father lost to cut, to to keep his sight, that there's a whole story behind that, but it doesn't, the poem doesn't require it, you know, doesn't require it to be there. And I forget if I actually went into the story at some point in one of the drafts. Uh, mm. I did want to show this notebook. Yes, please do <laughs> please share the notebook because it's, it belongs in a museum. That is so weird. I, well, I really, I did realize it's that. weird, but it's, I think it's true. I mean, you have it there. It's, and it's such a powerful, will you share the, the drafts that you've. Oh. Yeah. Um, this too, share the notebook. Oh. Share it all. Oh, the scroll? Yeah, because I think I love it as a teaching tool, obviously. I need it back, so hold on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Georgella is going to get a scroll that she's created with all the different drafts of the poem, and she uses it as a teaching tool. And I, as a big grown up who knows that you have, you will write many drafts of something, I still think it's very validating to see it. And I'm sure that for younger people, this is incredibly informative and, and validating of their own writing. So it just goes on and 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 that's still not all of it so Mm -hmm. but as I told you before it was a real different way for me to write because usually um I'm I'm in a a tighter focus of trying to at least at the first draft get a beginning and an end you know of something and uh, and I got some of the lines but I had uh, at the end I had something about the rose bush freezing and and I had written beside it a sick and sudden dive into poetry with a capital P where I was trying to make it like make it different and not just follow what it was and just let it keep going and uh and i think that's a i think that that was a sign although i didn't know it at the time that it might be freeing for other people too you know i i wasn't thinking about that but i was also writing a novel in here at the same time and i was writing i turned the notebook up and wrote the other way don't do that that's really stupid <laughs> I couldn't find anything. Oh, because you wanted to differentiate between the two pieces. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, (laughs) I can see that. But also you probably now with more experience realize, oh, I would know the difference just because they're completely different. Right. Right. But I didn't. Right. (laughs) Also, where it's like, seems like some kind of Da Vinci-esque sort of like, well, I won't write it in the mirror, but I will write it upside down, you know? (laughs) you know so that's um i i did almost no writing on the computer at that point uh i own i didn't have a laptop you know i had a the big Mm -hmm. the the big mac (laughs) i also had it well also i think at that point it was just the one that's like all was in one i think you know, I can't think of what those were called, but just like a big rectangle. Yeah. You know, um, that it you put discs in. Golden days. Yeah, floppy disks <laughs> and <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, like a back condition. I've got floppy disks. Oh man. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that would that would be painful, actually. Really it painful. Um, I'm trying to. So, would you like to read your poem? Sure. Oh, where did I put it? Well, oh, that's here. all right. I have it. If you don't, okay. So, uh, this is a poem from 2018. Mm -hmm. And what was the what was the occasion for this poem? Um, in 2017, in the winter, uh, a teacher, Julie Landsman, a teacher and poet, Julie Landsman from Minneapolis, sent me an email and said she was so concerned about the state of things, uh, the, the racism and the anti-immigration and the uh, well everything mm -hmm. that we were we were the road we were going down mm -hmm. and and so she she had used the the where i'm from poems a lot herself and she thought this would be a way to open it up nationally and create a, a website where people could send their poems and uh and create a river of voices um to speak back and say no this is who we are we're all these we're all these and we all have a voice uh, and so it started things started coming in right away once we got it going and we wanted to have a big reading in dc we were scheduled to do that uh, during poetry month in 2020 we we had pushed for that but mm -hmm. of course we were all home in 2020. yeah uh, but anyway in the run-up to the 2018 midterms we had this idea of having a poem in where people would write uh, uh, where I'm from, from that moment. Cause you know, most people, the first one you do is likely to be in the past, but you could write one from, you know, that's another thing about it. You can keep doing it because you can do it differently uh, depending on when, what you focus on. Um, and so we were, we challenged people to write a where I'm from of the moment and send it to their legislators or read it at their library or in a community uh, gathering, the church, uh, and then to let us know what happened. Um, so this is mine. Where I'm from, 2018. I'm from the cries of families sundered at our southern border, while Lady Liberty faces a filthy sea. I'm from all white, able-bodied, well-off, hetero men are created equal. And here, Puerto Rico, have some paper towels. I'm from our predator in chief who brags about grabbing pussy and mocks a woman who was sexually abused. I'm from countries we bombed or clear cut or destabilized to get what we wanted. I'm from the seven deadly sins confused with the American dream. I'm from the whole pilgrim whitewash. Our refusal to admit the land we stole, the Indians we slaughtered, the Africans we chained to build our wealth. I'm from their descendants gunned down on the street. I'm from children ripped from their parents' arms when the ship docked at the auction block in the field. I'm from their blood and bones feeding the ground I stand on. Very powerful. And I, listening to it again, I thought how the Puerto Rico thing in the moment, it was such a big deal. I mean, the thing that's minimalizing it. Um, and it's so much has happened since then. I haven't thought about it. Oh no. In a while. And, and I was grateful for your poem. That's the thing about writing something in the moment. It takes you back to that place and reminds you of COVID has it's wiped out so much of our awareness of that time, which was only four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And, and, you know, the, I kept trying to write op-eds mm. and the next thing would happen. Okay. So try to write about this. No, the next thing. And you become, 
not numb, but you can't take it, you can't take it all in. And as you say, you can't remember because you think this is the most outrageous it's going to get. And then, you know, it just goes farther. And like, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. The tunnel's just going deeper, deeper, deeper. That's how. Yeah. It, and there's no opportunity to take a breath and, and sort of reassess and, and I feel like there are a lot more conversations because of COVID. Like, I don't really think this conversation was happening before COVID about how this is how the system is designed to work. Like their system is that it's just this constant chaos because then you can't really concern yourself with voting because you're too worried about how you're going to eat or how, how you're, where you're going to sleep. And um, I feel like we're, we're starting to unpack some of that where when we were living through it, then I was just like, Oh my God, <laughs> like, what do we do? And and I was in that very animal place of survival, even though I was surviving just fine. I have a home, I have food, I have all these things, but it still brought up those feelings. Yes. And it goes right to your amygdala, yeah. you know, old, old brain. Mm -hmm. And they want us to freeze. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want us to just be like, um, I'm incapable of I don't have the bandwidth to to think critically. And and it doesn't help as this morning when I woke up and one of the he headlines news lines on my phone said nuclear annihilation question mark. I mean like <laughs> I uh maybe I'll go back to bed. Uh, I, you know, it's like, oh well, that could happen. We and we know it could happen. Mm -hmm. It's um, and so to try to find a place to stand and, and reckon with something, uh, and, and actually speak about it, um, is, is very difficult. And yet if you don't have your feet on the ground, on the ground, you know, it's that, that, that hydroplaning feeling mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. that just keeps that old brain going that's great because i have hydroplanes and it's uh it's terrifying yeah. me too right through the yeah. intersection yeah yeah and we are in many intersections we are and i and also with that i think you or for me personally when i am in that space i think well what can i do what do i matter what which is also how it's designed to work to, to silence us, um, to, to make us feel powerless. And um, it does matter. Our actions matter, our words matter, and nothing is wasted. Like we were talking about with writing, I believe that with living life as well, it matters. Yeah, it, it, and we, you know, we each empower each other we as we as we speak out however mm -hmm. however we do it um <sighs> nuclear annihilation it's it's funny um because that's something i will talk about with my kids as as climate change looms and covid and it's like well it wasn't as bad when i was a kid but we did also think we might all die like at any moment <laughs> i i grew up uh, in the mountains near Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where, you know, uh, where the bombs are made. Mm -hmm. And uh, in sixth grade, our teacher told us, we're not, we're not doing that nuclear drill thing because we don't have to worry. We're so close to Oak Ridge. And I had about a mile walk home from school and about halfway there, I thought, that's crazy. She's telling us we're all doomed. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, you you know, we don't mean to be bothered, you know. And I just thought grown-ups are crazy. <laughs> no nuclear fallout for you. You're just going to get blown up. Yeah, you'll be like, a bad Exactly. Um, oh, okay. That's cold comfort. When you said you were from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. No, I'm I, not. I almost said where the Oak Ridge boys are from, but I didn't. But I... <laughs> no, I'm I'm from Kentucky, but. Oh, but I'm, you went to school there. I was just close enough okay. in the where they make the bombs okay i i know you're from kentucky but when you said oak ridge 
that it, was the first thing that came to mind yeah because you know they were everywhere in the 80s yes they were yeah um yeah we i i went to high school near a, a nuclear plant and it was a similar we got a it was boulder colorado rocky flats was there it was a nuclear trigger plant and they were just like that ah, don't worry you'll be done yeah it'll be a flash as they say mm-hmm. good way to go right <laughs> now on page 232 <laughs> And, and I have those conversations with my kids because, you know, there is this sort of existential, like, why are we doing this? Right. Right. And for me, it's important to acknowledge, like, I get it. And to not just say, oh, don't worry. But, you know, no, I get why it all seems meaningless. Um, and what do we do? How do we live day to day? Um. And, and I shared with you earlier, I did this, I did where I'm from the, the prompts, the template with my teenager's class. And, and I was expecting some of that in the poems. That's sort of where I'm from is a planet that's dying or, you know, that, um, and it was really just love. That was most of the poems were just things they loved about their family and places they lived and what they ate. And, um, and I mean, it, it makes me cry just thinking about it because it was when we had sort of gone back, you know, and, and I think they were all filled with this joy of being with others again. And it was an important reminder of, yes, all that exists, but also this exists. And we need each other. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, every, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the writer Grace Paley, but she's one of my heroes. And she said, every time you speak the truth, you're making justice in this world. Mm. So That's beautiful. it is beautiful. And to think that when we tried, when we tried to get to a moment as it is, as we are, and find a voice uh, and be fully human and present, uh, it, it makes a difference. What whatever happens to it, it makes a difference. I believe that. Uh, and when you when you you know when you speak truthfully to your kids and don't try to take <laughs> a volcano, you know. Uh, it, it's it's not easy, but they know you're with them, mm-hmm. you're where they are, and uh, and, and we're all facing the same thing. We're different ages, and we have a different perspective. But it would be foolish to deny that these are not thoughts we all have. You know, these are thoughts that we all have when we look at nuclear annihilation question mark. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even do the headlines on my phone for that reason. Well, it's just bad news, mostly, or celebrity gossip, which I can't, I can't, my brain doesn't have space for anymore. I don't care. (laughs) Um, I wanted to, I asked you this question earlier, and so I'm going to ask it again, because I was curious, and I bet other people are, how did the templates happen? The template happened, uh, a guy named Fred First in, uh, in North Carolina went to a workshop led by a writer I know uh, from from Southwest Virginia, and she did the exercise, just, you know, not with no template. She just, Mm -hmm. um, and he loved it. And then he thought, well, what if I did make this, like fill out, you know, fill in your form here. And and then he put it up on the web free. I think maybe I wrote the poem in 93 and it was maybe just 94 or 95 when he did that. So, you know, teachers are hungry for something to try. So that helped get the word out. And then in 90, in 94, uh, this 
filmmaker in uh, in New York, the trio of writers and filmmakers, came up with this United States of Poetry series. I don't know if you mm. ever saw that. It was a no. PBS series, but they picked two poets in every state. Oh wow! They came to our house, and they and I sent them some poems, and that was the poem they picked. And they came to my house. They came into town with a bus that said poetry on the front. <laughs> And in some towns, they were able to get uh, fast food places to let them put a quotation on the marquee. So one place said, um, uh, no ideas, but in things, you know, people are like, but I want to hear. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. But yeah, wow. so it, they came here and videoed me reading the poem. And, uh, and so then it was on TV. Mm -hmm. Some people, like Kentucky, wouldn't show it until late at night because it was poetry. So there was some, you know, there was all there. You know, uh, you know, there was a man in a slip, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were angry uh, poems about that were obscene because of the obscenity of what they were writing about, right. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, but so that was another way, and then and there was an anthology published with that called the United States of Poetry, so that was a big way that got it out. Uh, but I just kept doing workshops, and people started sending me uh, poems, and I uh, I couldn't keep them all because no. the house isn't growing. <laughs> And I, you know, couldn't do the climate control outbuilding. Uh, but so they're in the university library because I couldn't throw them away either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so then for the the book that I'm r working on about yes. what are, what what is this book you're working on? I had to go to the special collections at the library and ask to see my Check them out. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> that is weird, but. Wonderful. It's, it's a joke that you should knock on their door and say, could I see my stuff? Uh, but I, you know, I love libraries. It's, oh, it's me too. To be there. Uh, yeah, the book is called For All Our Voices, uh, the story of where I'm from. And, uh, and it's, I mean, if it, if somebody goes for it, we'll see about that, but. Which the, someone absolutely should think of how many lives this poem has touched. I, I, I hope, I hope they do. Uh, it's certainly been rich for me to, to you know, to look back on it and kind of put it together because you know how it is with, you know, you've you've got jobs, you've got kids, and life is like rolling downhill in a sheet, and you're not you know you don't have uh, you're not documenting what's you know what's happening. You don't even know it's happening. It just starts happening, and then it. You know, so I, I didn't keep I didn't keep records, or, uh, but I did keep the pieces of paper and the little class books and the hardback books and the the poems from prisons and you know there's just so it will have a, a short history and then a, a collection of poems some by uh, poets whose name you'd recognize and mm -hmm. some uh, people who would say to you I'm not a poet. Although yes. one woman said to me, I'm not a poet, but my mamma was bad to write. And then I realized I hadn't heard anybody speak that way in a long time. But if you're bad to do something, that means you do it. Yeah, you're fixing to do it. Yeah. So she was. <laughs> uh, and then the last part is, uh, is other exercises that I have come up with that, that have been, nothing has been like where I'm from, but, uh, but I'm excited to read it. I love exercises. I love containers. Yeah, um, me too. And and I love sharing them. So you know, it's, and it'll be, it'll happen. There'll be links to videos and uh, uh, other other murals and dances and uh, the wealth of uh, of forms that this has people have taken it up into themselves and created uh, 
something wonderful. So, and that is also your email signature, is it not? For all our voices, yeah, it so, is. Yeah. Every time you write me, I'm like, that is a great email signature. <laughs> Mine is like XO or thanks, you know. <laughs> it's just like yours is like a mantra. Yeah, I. Uh, it was first that I have a newsletter, an e-newsletter, mm -hmm. and the title of the newsletter. Mm -hmm. I realized, well, that's that's where I stand. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. I, I, it's, I, we're going to wrap up, but I just, you shared the idea and I'm not going to say her name, right. So I'm not going to try, but citizen, the idea of a citizen poet, because we were talking about um, how many people will come on and share their poem and always say, I'm not a poet, but I wrote this Yes, poem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they don't go this all the way to say I wrote this. Right. <laughs> way right yeah no Naomi Shihab Nye um, who has been the children's U.S. poet laureate for children um, I'm not sure if I think she still is but I'm not sure about the term mm -hmm. uh, here, but she uses the uses the concept of the citizen poet the person who who uh, doesn't think of themselves as a poet is not in the practice of writing poetry, but is called upon in some way and does. And, you know, I went through Tuscaloosa, Alabama soon after the tornadoes hit there in whatever year that was. And in the Starbucks, people had written, mm -hmm. they'd made a belt bulletin board and pe people had written these poems. And, you know, after 9-11, there were poems all over. I mean, it, it's the heart cry when people get struck you know, that they, they give out poems. It's just intrinsic in us as human beings. Uh, and so I, I appreciate her articulating that, mm -hmm. and the, that it happens and that it, that it matters. It belongs to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not only for select people who have studied no. it and who have mastered it also this sort of concept of mastery of language is just so off-putting yeah <laughs> and inaccurate true. but I do think that there is that school of thought um and I and I feel like this idea of a citizen poet gives ownership back to to us I think so too I think so too and 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 humanizes, emphasizes our common humanity. And this is a tool we have to express ourselves and uh, welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. Well, I can't think of a better place to close than that. Um, I wanna thank you again <laughs> for your generosity and patience and all the things. And I, it really was a treat. We talked about different things like I knew we would and some of the same things. So I just got to talk to you for twice as long. So yeah, um, maybe we went ahead and did it while we had the, <laughs> the humor about the whole thing. Right. Where it wasn't like, okay, we gotta, you know, Try. get excited about this again. Yes, I agree. So this just, time it's going to work. I doubt it didn't work. And then <laughs> no. Decided it's going to work. I have tested it. So I just, um, I look forward to this book because I believe it will happen. And it feels like such a great companion to all of this expression that's happened because you put your voice out there. Yeah. And because, you know, the thing about, about writing is uh, somehow you get to the page, mm -hmm. somehow you get there and then you have to trust that you're it feels like you're doing the right thing you know so you have to trust yeah. that you are and besides I, I i really wanted to be a circus performer but i just didn't see it working out <laughs> you can do anything else but be a circus performer george ellis please do so you took that advice to heart and you were became a poet so. <laughs> a glamorous of way to make a living mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. I'll be looking forward to watching more of these. Thank you.